Okay, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Sam Harlow. I am the, sorry, I thought I had turned the mic off. Hello, my name is Sam Harlow and I'm the online learning um, kinesiology public health education librarian for UNCG libraries. Um, UNCG Libraries created a series of webinars for the UNCG community on online learning and innovation. Um, this is the, I think, 11th webinar for this series, and welcome. In this series, different UNCG instructional technology consultants, ITS staff, and faculty will cover topics on online learning pedagogies, um, UNCG instructional technology tools, such as Canvas, Google, Box, etc., and more. These 30-minute webinars will be recorded in WebEx meetings and placed on the library webpage. Um, and I'm going to throw that page on the box into the chat. And oops, just came in. Um, so this page will also contain other ap applicable links and presentation materials. Um, so. We will give the recording file of this to the ITC or ITS staff members presenting on the material. So just to cover some logistical things about how this webinar is going to run, um, please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red, but feel free to turn your audio back on by clicking the audio icon again at the end of the webinar to participate in the conversation with the presenters. So, um, presenters. Uh, if you have a question, feel free to participate in chat, um, and also you can put in any of your conversations into chat if you don't have a microphone. If you have questions throughout the webinar, you can put them into chat and I'll track the questions while the presenters um, present the material. So if you have any technical issues during the webinar, you're welcome to email me, throw my email in here, or call me. Um, I'll be muted throughout the presentation so you don't have to worry about um, interrupting that. So before I introduce the presentation, the webinar, does anyone have any questions? Okay, so this session is hosted by Amanda Shipman and Denise Cowardin from UNCG ITS. ARC is a communication tool available through Canvas that allows instructors and students to actively collaborate through video and audio media. So I am first going to play a video, um, then I'm going to hand it over to Denise. So, um, here we go. What if teaching with video was more intuitive? What if learning with video was more interactive? That's the whole point of ARC, a next generation video platform that makes video more intuitive, interactive, and collaborative. How? Meet Ms. Watkins. Hi, Ms. Watkins. She teaches geology. Actually, she teaches students, but you get the idea. She wants to use this cool video for her class. We'll skip all the flaming hoops that doing so used to require and get right to ARC, which has a simple, easy to use video management tool. Ms. Watkins finds the video, drags it into Canvas. Boom, video posted. Now all her students can watch the video, wherever they are. And better yet, they do. But, and this is the cool part, they do more than just watch. They engage, comment, discuss, ask questions. It's more than content, it's conversation. Because ARC lets them comment on the video, in the video, for everyone to see and discuss. We're still working on a civility filter. And Ms. Watkins can follow up with explanations, answers, more questions. And she can see who's watching the video, who's not, how long they're watching. It's like Moneyball, but with educational videos. Sort of. Maybe the video worked. Maybe it flopped. With ARC, she can adjust on the fly. And with ARC's cross-functional video management tool, Ms. Watkins can access Mr. Edison's videos and maybe find something more fitting with volcanoes or something. And again, she can see how students interact. Questions, discussions, who watches, and for how long. Who doesn't watch at all? And with Canvas integrations, Ms. Watkins can use her quiver of Canvas tools to measure skills and knowledge. Rinse, repeat. Or she could just show a YouTube clip or a film strip and hope nobody falls asleep. ARC is the end of passive video. The beginning of a hands-on video experience. ARC unmutes learning. So, back to the questions. 
What if teaching with video was more intuitive? What if learning with video was more interactive? It already is. With art. Okay. So now I'm going to hand it over to Denise. Hi. Can everyone hear me? Um, I'm Denise Coordon with ITS, and I'm just going to do a little bit of talking about what ARC is. I wanted to show the video at the beginning so you could get an idea of it, um, but I'm going to talk, and then Amanda is going to come in and demo it for you so you can see it in action. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to go over a few things, and if you guys will give me a minute, I'm trying to figure out how to share my screen properly. I always have a problem with this. All right, so I think I've got it. Um, Sam, let me know if you can't see what I'm doing. So a little bit about ARC. As you saw in the video, it's a collaborative video tool within Canvas. Um, you can record videos. You can upload videos that you've already recorded. You can embed YouTube videos. Um, you can do screencasts. So if you want to demonstrate a principle or a software to your students, you can do that. You can record directly from your webcam, you can use your smartphone, or you can use a video camera to record video. Um, one of the cool things about ARC is that you can see the conversation right on the timeline. So if somebody has a comment or a question, they can pause the video, type their question, and as you see what, you'll see when Amanda demonstrates this, you'll see a little dot that will take you directly to that location in the video and the comment or the question that the student asked. You can also do threaded conversations, so I can reply to a question that someone asks, or I could ask a question um, and have students reply directly to my question. Um, you also have analytics in ARC. You can literally see how many people in your class have watched the video and how long they've watched the video. You can see individual students, exactly where they watched, where they might have skipped, where they might have left off five minutes before the video ended, so you get a lot of good information about what's going on with your video. Whoops, wrong way. <clears throat> Some ideas of using ARC. Um, and we've got a few faculty who are starting to get into it. I'm going to talk about some of those so that you uh, understand. But So first of all, you can use ARC to present content. You can present any kind of video content you want in the Rich Content Editor anywhere that it can be accessed. So on a page in Canvas, on an assignment, in a discussion, um, in a quiz, you can present video directly in Canvas. Um, <clears throat> sorry. You can choose to allow commenting on your video or you can turn it off. Um, if you want to have conversations and you want to see what students are doing, uh, talking to each other or asking questions, you want to leave the commenting on. You can add your own comments on the video. So you could point out at this point in the video, you know, you should really be paying attention to X, Y, or Z. And all the students will see that information. Um, one of the coolest things about ARC is that it is very easy to caption your videos. Um, in fact, I know quite a few people who are starting to use it just because of that feature. Um, when you caption your videos um, in ARC, there, it's about 85% accurate. So it's not fabulously accurate, but it's not bad. And it's very easy to edit the captions directly in ARC. I ca um, caption all my own videos, and usually my southern accent gives it about four or five stupid words throughout that make no sense, but I can usually fix it very easily. And again, I mentioned the analytics. You can see the overall number of people who viewed specific parts of the video, um, one student, what they've viewed, and it can give you an insight as to how your video is working, whether the students are getting what you're um, wanting them to see. <coughs> There's a brand new feature that's currently in beta, which is quizzing um, in ARC videos, so you can enter a quiz question. Right now, the only type is multiple choice, um, but they are going to have true false and multiple answer questions coming in the near future. And the video will pause at that point, and the students have to answer the question before they can go on in the video. If they are not sure of the answer, they can go back and rewatch that section of the video that should have the answer in it. At the end of it, they'll, they'll be able to see their results. Um, and they can replay the video if they need to see the whole thing over because they didn't do well. Um, <coughs> excuse me. 
the um, again future future plans or to have true false questions. Um, they currently have analysis where you can see items analysis for the entire class. You cannot see individual students' uh, results at this point, and right now there is no pass back to the gradebook, but there is plan for hopefully early 2019 so that students will take the quiz and you can actually make it a grade in the Canvas gradebook and each student will get an individual grade. Um, so that's a couple ways to use ARC as an instructor, but you can also use ARC, allow your students to use ARC. So you can have ARC be an assignment. Um, students can record, again, they can use their webcam on their computer, they could use their smartphone or any other video camera. Um, they can edit their video however they would like to and then upload it as an ARC assignment. Um, you get to grade the assignment directly in SpeedGrader, so it makes it very easy. You can comment at specific points on the video or you can do an overall comment and an overall grade. Um, some uses that we have going on already in the university, um, some ARC assignments are used for student teaching. So uh, a student teacher will record themselves teaching a class submit it as an assignment, and then the faculty can go in and you know, point out, well, this is an issue with classroom management. You might have tried this, or you might have tried that at this point. Um, some other ideas are foreign language students, especially online foreign language students, can record themselves speaking, and then the instructors can comment on the timeline of the video to correct their pronunciation and their accent. Um, you can use it for performances, for recording performances and having that be submitted, or for just group presentations, something like that. And uh, some other ways that you can use ARC for uh, student collaboration. So you can put a video in a discussion, or students could put a video in a discussion and have it uh, commented on. Um, you can have peer feedback, so uh, great use of a video if a student, for example, um, recorded a performance and put it in a discussion and their peers could give them feedback on their performance making suggestions for improvement um, and, and group projects. They can also work together in groups to create video and to submit um, as a group assignment. So lots of ideas of what you can do with ARC and I'm going to let Amanda, if nobody has questions yet, um, I'm going to let Amanda give us a demo of ARC. So give me just a second. I'm going to stop sharing. And Amanda, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here you go. All right. Let me just share my screen. Um, go. All right. So I'm going to be showing you guys ARC. Um, I don't know if Denise mentioned, but ARC is not part of Canvas, but because it was um, created by the folks that actually give us Canvas, it integrates really nicely with Canvas. Um, currently, um, in order to get access to art, you have to request it, and Denise will talk more about that at the end, um, but we add it to your course. So um, you won't be able to see it now, and um, you would have to request this for each course in which you'd like to use ARC. So first of all, I'm in. I'm going to be switching back between instructor and um, student view. Um, and Denise or Sam, please give me a shout out if you can't see me. Um, but everything looks good on my end. Or Denise, if I forget something. Um, so once we turn on ARC in your course, the first thing you'll notice is that you see in your course navigation as the instructor an ARC item. This is only visible to you. It is not visible to students in your course. So this is where you can do a lot of the management of your videos. Other thing, places where you'll find ARC, um, as Denise mentioned, and I'll show you in a moment here, is you'll have an ARC icon in your Rich Content Editor, but that's basically your um, editing toolbar that you'll see in various areas of Canvas, pages, assignments, quizzes, etc. Um, so anywhere you have the Rich Content Editor, you'll have the icon where you can then use to embed an ARC video. And then lastly, again, as Denise mentioned, you'll see it as a tab, and I'm going to show you this too, for students. If ARC is enabled in your course, when the students submit an online assignment, um, they'll have a tab that they can use to actually submit ARC video, and I'll show you that. 
So first I wanted to talk a little bit about um, use case of you're an instructor and you simply want to share video, either it's video that you have recorded outside of ARC or Canvas, or perhaps it's video that you are going to record inside of ARC, can, in, inside of Canvas. So um, I'm just going to go over to Pages because that's one place where you can do it. Again, you can do it multiple places. I'm going to create a new page. And as you'll see right here, this little blue icon is, is your ARC icon. I'm going to click on it. And again, you're going to get a very similar page to where I was at previously on um, when I clicked on the ARC item in my course navigation. But here are the videos that I have currently uploaded into ARC. Um, it doesn't matter which course I've done this in. So if, if I'm using ARC in a different course, I'm going to see those videos as well. Um, so I can add new videos if I want to upload a video. Um, it takes most any file format, movie, MOV files, MP4. Um, I can't, the list goes on and on. So you can drag and drop here or I can click browse and, and locate a video on my hard drive and upload it. Um, YouTube, Denise mentioned this, you can actually bring or incorporate YouTube videos into ARC. So they're not hosted in ARC, they are still hosted in YouTube, but if you put a URL for a YouTube video here, you can then um, use the commenting functionality um, and I believe the quizzing functionality for a YouTube video. It gets a little, um, eh, whenever you want to do captioning, that's the one issue with YouTube and ARC together is that you can't use ARC captioning and some you might have to trick it to try to use YouTube, but that's we can get into that some other time. Um, but I'm not going to upload a new video. I've already got some there. The other things that I can do here, I can record a video um, and I can do that either doing a screencast. So similar to what I'm doing now, a screencast video where I'm showing you what's on my screen or also called screen capture or webcam capture. This is if I wanna, wanted to record um, myself with my webcam, my face, um, me talking, um, I could do that as well. Let's choose screen capture just so I can show you something that's um, relatively new and, and neat. So the first time that you use this, um, just note it's actually going to prompt you to download a um, screen recorder application, but I've already done that. So it already knows that I have the application, so it opens it up. And if you've ever used anything else like this, Screencast-O-Matic or some other applications, it's fairly similar. I can drag the window, um, and I believe I can enlarge it here, you know, anywhere on my screen that I want to record. Um, What's neat about this is I've got screen recording. I can switch over to webcam as well here. But if I click both, I can actually, let me select my webcam. There it is, I don't know if you can see me. So I can actually record my screen and then also have um, imposed image or video of myself appear at the same time. So that's, that's kind of neat. So once you're ready to go, you click record. It's going to record your video or your screen as well as audio. And then let's see, stop it. And then click done. And then once you're done recording, let me just give it a title it'll upload to ARC. Then it will be available for you to caption um, and then share in your course. All right. Oh, I wanna save that. I'm not sure what it's wanting to save. So while I'm here, before I close the screen, um, we were talking about um, something I may do with ARC and this is, I, I may create a video and share it with my students in a Canvas page. So I'm going to select this video because it's the one I want to um, share. And then there are some options you have here when you're sharing the video. If you want students to be able to actually download this video, you can select that, but that's entirely up to you. And then allow comments, which is you know one of the um, use cases for ARC is one reason why you would use ARC as opposed to Canvas um, for sharing video is that 
it would enable you to, or students, or you to comment on the video. So we're going to click Embed. It's doing its thing. All right, so now I have on this Canvas page that I can incorporate into a module, um, or leave it here, um, is an ARC demo video. Um, just some information. Um, as students begin to watch this video under the insights area, this is where I'm going to begin to see the students listed. There's really no one in my course except for these three people. So, But you'll see the students and then you'll be able to see on the timeline how long they've watched. If I've captioned this video, um, I'll have the option to edit or review and publish here, which I have already done. Um, basically what will happen if I wanted to caption this video when I come into this captions area if it's not already been this video has been captioned because I wanted to show you an example and it takes a little bit of time um, but basically I'd be able to click request captioning and you'd be put in a queue um, and then on the arc side it would work on captioning the video oh, I'm trying to remember how long it took this maybe an hour at most but it, the time is going to vary so just you know request captioning, leave it, and then come back to this later. You'll actually get an email when the captioning is complete. When it's complete, I come back into the video, click on captions, and I'll see now that I've requested English captions. And actually when I did this, this video um, um, is a British guy, so I did UK English. Um, as you'll see over here, these are all the different languages you have to choose from. Anyways, um, what I want to do before students can actually see the captions is review and publish. So this is what Denise was talking about earlier about how easy it is to edit the captions. So these are the captions that ARC has provided. Um, right away I can see it's not completely accurate, but I can easily you know, go in and change the captions. So I can go through the timeline, edit the captions, and then when I'm done, you know, go through all that. It will apply to those captions. You don't have to click save or anything. So once you're done doing that, I'm going to review and pu I'll publish is what I want to do. That's what I was looking for. So once you're done editing your captions, make sure you click publish. So now they'll be visible if the student or anyone viewing your video um, enables it in the player. Sorry, I'm just going over my notes. So we talked about editing the captions. So commenting. So if I were going to give this video to students and I wanted to point out certain areas of the video um, where they might need to pay particular attention, I can navigate through the timeline and add a comment here. So as you can see, underneath the video, you've got the threaded discussion type um, comments um, where students could come back and reply if they wanted to. So I can continue to move throughout the video. Um, but perhaps I want to leave this open and allow students to comment. So I'm going to actually switch over to uh, a different browser so I can be logged in as a student. So let's do that and refresh. Okay, the page I was just looking at was the ARC demo page. Again, I can bring this page into my modules in Canvas if I wanted to do that. Um, I can see here on the timeline those dots are where the instructor or Amanda Shipman added comments, but as a student, if I wanted to navigate to some point in the video, I can, of course I'd be playing it, so I'm not going to play it. I don't even know if the audio is coming through. But once I'm ready, if I had a question about this specific area of the video, I can add my question here. And then you'll see, again, down in the comments area, it labels who made who made the comment and if the instructor wanted to come and reply to this comment to answer the student's question, they could do that. It would be visible for all students in the course, so it would be helpful um, for all students here.
So again, I can continue to do that. So that's one way you can use um, ARC. Just keep in mind, if you're using this um, for like the student teaching aspect, if a student was going to submit a video and the teacher was going to critique uh, the teaching using the commenting function on the video, you're not going to want to do that through a Canvas page. You're going to want to do that through an, an assignment because as it is now in this page, all of the students can see all of the comments. So just keep that in mind. If I wanted to actually do it as an assignment submission for students, I would create just a regular old assignment for them. Um, and because ARC is enabled in my course, when they go to submit the assignment, they'll get an ARC tab. So just real quickly here, I'll create an assignment. And just make sure when you're in the submission type, you choose online and then file uploads. We don't want to do any of these other options. Let's save and publish. So there's my ARC assignment. I'm going to switch back over to student. Refresh. Here's the ARC assignment I just created. I'm in as a student. I'm going to click on the assignment, click Submit, and now you'll see um, this is exactly what a student would see, and this is both in the mobile app, the Canvas mobile app, and in Canvas in the browser. Um, your standard file upload, Google Doc, but now I see an ARC tab. So as a student, I've already got one video up there, but just like an instructor, I can add additional videos. If I recorded video um, on my cell phone, I can um, you know, then add it manually, but if I wanted to actually do the recording in Canvas, I could do that just like an instructor can. I can use the screen capture functionality as well as the webcam capture. So speeches, for example, a lot of the communications classes, um, students, uh, for the online version at least, students might be recording themselves giving speeches. Um, they could do that right on their webcam on the computer in Canvas without having to actually record it outside of Canvas and then do the upload. Either way will work. They can also caption um, videos as well. So let me just do this submission. And now I'm going to submit the assignment. So switching back over to my instructor view, I'm going to go into the assignment. I'm going to go to Speed Grader. And now I have the video in Speed Grader. I can use my regular grading options over in the right hand panel, but then I have the commenting functionality in the video. So as I watch the video, I can pause at any point in time and add my comments. Notice that when I add the comments, they kind of pop up in a bubble right above the, the video player controls. So when the student then goes back into their assignment feedback, they'll see not only the comments in the video, but then the grading comments um, that I've added in SpeedGrader. All right. All right, so we commented. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm capturing everything that we are doing here. Um, so one of the last things I wanted to talk about, which we just got access to literally last week, we've been waiting for this functionality for about a year now, and we're very excited that it's here. Um, there's definitely some work to be done. It's in beta now. And if you decide you want to use ARC in your course, um, when you, and again, Denise is going to tell you how to submit a request. Um, but when you do that, you might notate on the request if you want to use the quizzing functionality. Just keep in mind it's in beta, you may have issues, but again, 
because it's not writing grades back to the grade book yet. Um, shouldn't be a huge deal if you encounter a, a slight issue. Um, it's not going to affect student grades by any means, but it's definitely worth a try um, if you're interested in doing this. So um, creating quizzes for your video. You're going to go into ARC in your course navigation, and actually you'll do this first before, so perhaps you're going to um, add a quiz to a video and then um, share that video with students in a Canvas page. What would actually happen is throughout the, the timeline on the video, the video would pause wherever you've inserted a question, allow the student to answer it, and then continue. Um, so you'll see here, I've got two videos in my uploads area, and I actually need to navigate to that. Um, this video right here, I've got a quiz, a version with the quiz and without. So just real quickly, so I can show you how to create the quiz, let's choose this video actually. I might have done it already. Okay, perfect. So I'm in my uploads area. I've got this video over here on the far right. When I click on the three dots in the thumbnail, I'm going to get the create quiz functionality. I've got to give my quiz a name. I can add a description if I want and get started. So what I'm actually um, provided with is the video. Similar to the commenting, at any point in the timeline, let me do this, of this video, I can pause it and you'll see that little plus sign, click the plus sign, and I have the ability to add a multiple choice question. Again, more question types are coming, but for now the only option you have is multiple choice. Um, I haven't even watched this video, so we're just going to make up a question. <laughs> Can't think on the fly. And graph. Just random words. All right, so I select the correct answer, a lot like the quiz tool in, in Canvas right now, and then click Save, and then I can continue to play the video, navigate wherever I'd like to insert the question, pause the video, add my next question. select the correct answer and save. So when I'm done adding questions to my video, I'm going to click done. So when I'm ready to, um, so you'll notice on this page actually the little rocket ship icon, this just indicates that I've got a quiz that I can, and you could create more than one quiz for each video. So if you know you're going to use this video, um, but for one class you want one quiz and for a different class a different one, you can do that. Um, so now I'm going to go to, um, we'll do it in a Canvas page. Um, and insert this video into a Canvas page and make sure that we're using the, the version with the quiz. All right, here's my page. I'm going to go to my ARC videos. Um, so these, again, I can see clearly which one of these videos have quizzes attached to them. I'm going to select this particular video. And then what I get is the standard embed options. If I'm just using the video without the quiz, I can do that. But if I want to make sure that students get the quiz, I want to select video quiz embed. And then if I had attached multiple quizzes to this video, I'd be able to select it, but I only have one. I'm just going to click embed. I'm going to save and publish this particular video. And then I'm going to switch over to student view here. And I actually have already inserted it into this particular page. So let's go ahead and open this up. I'm in the student view, or I'm logged in as a student. And when I'm ready to get started, I can play the video. At the points in the video, you'll see right away, here are the quiz questions with that white circle with the red outline. 
So one should pop up for me any second now. Okay, so the video pauses automatically and I pose the question and I select the correct, an the correct answer and choose continue. So I'm not going to watch it all the way through, but once I get right up into the next question, Okay, any minute now. So now I can select the answer to the next question and move forward. So I could do that, you know, I can insert as many questions, quiz questions as I'd like. Um, so right now, let me look at the quiz results. I was waiting on this. This is a part that's kind of still in progress and Denise mentioned earlier right now, you can only see the results for the whole class, not individual results. So I have to take a look at that. Um, but um, it is at least a self-check exercise. Let's see. Amanda? Yeah? Uh, as a student, you have to get all the way through the end of the video before you get the option to submit the quiz. <sighs> Thank results. you. Let's do that. All right, let me go back to my student view. That would be one. Ah, thank you, Denise. <laughs> I didn't do that earlier. Um, so w as a student, this is what I need to do, submit the quiz. Ha, ha, ha. Except for the button isn't working. Maybe if I get it on there. Oops, that's data. Yep, exactly. As you can see, well, Unfortunately, the button's not working, but I'll have to check into that. I don't know if I need to navigate away and come back. Let me try it real quickly. Not there yet. So we need to check on that. Um, but like I said, um, we just got access to this last week. So uh, did we have any questions? I thought somebody was coming through with a question. Thanks, guys. Um, does anyone have any questions that they want to put in the chat or unmute themselves and ask? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi, this is Francine. Um, so we have to request that ARC is added to our class. I'm just wondering what kind of turnaround time is needed there. Is it pretty fast? It's pretty fast. We do it um, um, in my group here in IT. So um, I'd say within uh, most of the time it's within 24 hours. Unless oh, okay, nothing I have to take away in advance. Great, thank you. No, you're welcome. And I think then, um, Sarah asked, sorry, go ahead. Leanne, do you have a question? Okay, well, Sarah asked, um, can the student scroll through the way you did? In other words, not actually watch the video, but zip through it. They can, but you'll be able to see the time, spent on the, the time spent on the video for that student. Um, so, yes, they can do it, but you'll be able to see that they did it. Does that make sense? She said yes. Okay. Okay. And if Leanne, if you have a question, feel free to ask it or put it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other questions from anyone? Sam, this is Denise again. Uh, just a couple of things that I wanted to follow up. I just sent in the chat the link to request ARC at UNCG. It's go.uncg.edu slash ARC dash request. And I just also want to tell people right now we have limited licensing for ARC. We have 2,500 licenses and that's for faculty and students. So every time a student reads, uh, I mean, <clears throat> the first time a student watches a video, they, an ARC account is created for them. So it counts as one seat. Um, and it's available first come, first served. If you want to use it in the spring or if you want to use it 
in the fall, go ahead and fill out that request. We still have licensing available for this year, and we're trying to increase that number. Um, we'd like to get it uh, for everybody if possible, but we're working on that right now. Denise, you have the ball in case you wanted to share any part of your uh, Sure, I can just show the screen real quick. It just says what I just said, basically. Okay, great. So as you're sharing your screen, Denise, I am going to, um, you know, go through a couple of logistical things. You will get a recording of this um, through YouTube. Um, but there are other things coming up. So the next um, one for uh, this series is on Monday, December 3rd at 1 p.m. And it's on making images accessible with alternative text by Melanie Illy, I think how you say it. Um, she's our UNCG online accessibility coordinator. So that should be interesting if you're interested in learning more about it, making your images accessible. Um, we also have one coming up this week if you're interested on SAGE research methods which is um, a uh, database about research methodology resources. Like, you know, if you want your students to write a literature review or anything like that, it has some really great stuff. So there's the research and application one. Um, the other one is online learning. Um, so Sarah asked, would this work with tech, I think we're talking about ARC. Would this work with text? I'm looking for a way to walk through a text and have students comment on it. I can imagine how you could put up a video of a text, as weird as that sounds, and embed quizzes and commenting into it. Sarah, I think you would do that as a screen capture recording. I think you could do it that way. Amanda, what do you think? Yeah, that would work if the text is on your, uh, assuming the text is on the screen and not right. that you want to make a video of a book or something. Um, but yeah, if the text is on the screen, sure. Bring up your PDF or whatever. Uh, do screen capture. Um, just reading the notes. Imagine, if, yeah. And then embed a quiz. Just note that if you do embed the quiz, the text would be visible on the screen unless you move it off. So if you wanted to put, you know, go through the text and give a quiz, you might remove, you know, in your screen capture the PDF. Um, but I think it would work just fine. Amanda. Yeah. Can you go through the um, quizzing feature? Well, not the quizzing features. How do you um, do the quiz again? Um, so request, request access to quiz or create a quiz? Yes, request access to the quiz. Um, if you would like access to quizzing beta um, and you're requesting ARC for your course, mm -hmm. when you fill out the ARC request form, just notate in the comment section that you would like to also get access to quizzing. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just using, I have the art testing for, for nursing, so uh -huh. I still have to request it, the quizzing feature. Well, it's assigned to you by person, not course, for the quizzing functionality. So for you, Joy, you already have access, but if you have other faculty, um, okay. if you'll send me a list of faculty that you want to be able to access the quizzing functionality and I'll have to turn it on for their ARC account. Okay, she'll do. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, great. Well, I think that's it. Um, like I said, look out in your email for the recording. Thank you, Amanda and Denise. This was really interesting. I was happy to see the quizzing. I haven't played around with it yet. But yeah, great. I hope everyone has a great day, election day, and uh, we'll see everyone around campus or in the virtual world. Thank you.